I've been thinking a lot lately about propulsion for the boat and different methods other than purely sails. And in my research, I've been finding this wave propulsion talked about a little bit. Apparently, this has been around for 170 years, something like that. And the first ones were just these fins, flexible fins on the back of boats that they tried out. And as the waves push it up, the flexible material rubber or something like that would push back on the wave and it would act like a fin and just paddle you forward. Uh, there have been different iterations of this along the way. At some point, they started to use hydrofoils, get a little bit more clever about it. So as the water passed over it, you'd get a lifting action, which would be forward action. Um, so they tried it on larger ships with like smaller foils. Apparently, it improves the 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 performance, lowers fuel costs and things like that. Even if it's smaller, not necessarily propelling the entire thing, but just an add-on. They tried it on the keels. And even this guy, Centauri Mermaid 2, with these two little hydrofoils on the back, apparently this is the front that he's standing on because uh, of how the hydrofoil is facing. But apparently just with this, he sailed from Hawaii to uh, Japan in several months. I think the average uh, speed that he was going was uh, something like three knots to five knots, something like that. There's also another version of this that they use for autonomous drones throughout the sea. And it has a little shuttle on the back here, and as the upper portion goes up and down the waves, this thing is allowed to rise and fall. This doesn't seem to be spring-loaded. It seems to be just using the hydrofoil effect. That's my best guess. There's also an electric thing for when there's no waves. Electric uh, motor. And here are some actual tests in wave wave chambers. This one's just spring loaded. It's not a hydrofoil. So just by absorbing the wave energy and pushing back on it, it's propelling it forward. And I thought that's a pretty good idea. So I've been thinking about how to incorporate it into the cargo ship boat. The cargo, not the cargo ship, the uh, tank car boat. And as the boat rocks in different directions from the waves, go up and down the waves, then the fins on the bottom are pushed up by the water or down by the water. And instead of springs like Centauri, the mermaid did, I thought about just using flat pieces of spring steel. It's cheap, easily replaceable. You just weld it to the bracing, and then a rod that goes down, connecting to the fins. So it seems like a very, very, very simple system to propel a boat forward with low maintenance costs, low, low construction costs also. All you're dealing with here is basically a steel pipe weld with uh, two steel pieces of steel. Uh, two flat pieces of steel attached to it into a wedge to create a hydrofoil shape. I don't know if this is an optimal shape. Perhaps this needs to be like that more. But even to get this shape, uh, you could do just take a larger piece of steel and flatten it. Seems to make sense. And then put another pipe inside of it to put onto a rod, and that would be your pivot system. Yeah, I think this would be a more ideal shape for a hydrofoil effect. And from what I've been reading, uh, this type of wave propulsion on boats can go uh, over 10 knots. It depends on how, how much, how many foils you have, I guess, and how much propulsion, how much you're extracting from the waves. But this, it seems like it would be extracting quite a bit. This is utilizing a lot of space, and that's another reason that I wanted to do the, the trimaran shape to allow more bracing for this type of a system. So it becomes very stable in the water and propels itself forward. You don't need an engine. 
it's probably a good idea to have an engine, but at the same time, you don't need an engine. You don't need sails. You just tool along like this. And if you want to have it powered, you could reuse this system with a, perhaps a pneumatic piston on top here, just pulling it up and down, the fin up and down. As you're, as you're driving it through compressed air or something like that, converting um, solar energy or other electrical generation. And that would free up the deck here for solar panels and wind, pan uh, wind turbines to drive a pneumatic system for when there's no, when there's no wave action, when it's just calm. You wouldn't need the pneumatic piston, all of them. You could probably just do it, two of them, the back ones. I think when I was pricing pneumatic pistons, there were a couple hundred dollars for a decently powered one. And then you need a comp air compressor. But again, very simple, very foolproof. Pneumatic pistons, not much can go wrong with them. It's just compressed air in a cylinder and it pushes up and down. It's not as much trouble as like a full blown engine. And it seems like the performance of something like this would be better than an engine. Perhaps not as fast. It wouldn't be able to give you the raw power over a short amount of time, but over a long, like a month long passage, the trade offs in a system like this it seems uh, far outweighs anything else. Even sails, sail you have to deal with the rigging and the sails themselves and the mast. And it also adds a lot of um, healing action for the boat, it's just tipping your boat over all the time. And you're dealing with it all, it seems like a huge pain. Like I like the ideas of sails, but compared to something like this, where it's just using the ocean to power itself forward, it seems like no contest. Um, so maybe sails in the future, maybe sails for the design, maybe powered in the design also, perhaps not using these, perhaps a traditional screw or propeller, um, or perhaps not. I think it would depend how well it performs, but that's a general idea. Let me know what you think.